This is the best Tesla stock news this year for me as a long-term Tesla stock investor. Not only did we find out how the voting turned out, but Elon also said yes to... Okay, Elon Musk, we got you the options. Now you have to make Tesla the most valuable company on earth. Deal? Deal, says Elon. Elon is fully committed to Tesla going forward. Tesla shareholders are celebrating and Tesla stock today is up. And if you like this, click the like button. I am so happy right now. Yesterday evening, Elon said both Tesla shareholder resolutions are currently passing by wide margins. And as I'm recording, people are still voting. And despite that, this is already a landslide win for Elon Musk. Currently, 73% of the Tesla shareholders that have voted have already voted in favor of Elon Musk, which is the same number that that voted in favor back in 2018 and there's a good chance the final number is going to be even higher. The orange line means a guaranteed win so if we are over this this means we already won which we did even though technically voting is still going on. The Texas issue that one was a harder one because 50% of all these shareholders had to vote yes including those that are not voting so the turnout turned out great. But if you look at how the voting has been going, you can see that the day before yesterday, it was not clear what's gonna happen yet. And then yesterday, a big jump in votes. So it definitely explains why Tesla's team was so active in getting people to vote, but it actually worked. And for the Texas vote before the shareholder meeting, 70.5% of all outstanding Tesla shares participated, <laughs> which is a huge turnout. That's definitely a turnout record for Tesla. Tesla. This definitely proves that the judge was wrong and that we understood what we voted for back in 2018. A big shout out goes to Kathleen McCormick, the judge that rescinded the compensation package because there is no judge in history that ever inflicted more damage on the Delaware court system. Delaware going forward is no longer going to be the default choice for corporations to incorporate. Thanks to Kathleen McCormick. So while many companies will think twice before incorporating there, I say no, many won't even think about Delaware anymore. Tesla shareholders are all happy today. And Martin Vieca, who took care of investment relations at Tesla, <laughs> admitted, as some might suspect, these charts inversely correlated with my stress level over the past six weeks. And today is actually Martin's last day at Tesla. He has done great for Tesla. This whole thing is huge news for us long-term Tesla stock investors because number one, it guarantees that Musk is is basically going to stay at Tesla. Long-term Tesla stockholders are not going to sell Tesla stock. And once Tesla is fully reincorporated in Texas, we don't need to worry about significant legal challenges in the future. This whole thing is also a massive win for Texas. Texas governor is congratulating Elon. Big shout out goes to everyone who participated in getting people to vote. That has been very important. A massive shout out goes to Alexandra. She put so much work into getting everyone to vote. And I hope you guys guys didn't mind me telling people to vote, 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 vote pretty much every day, even though I was confident this would pass. But if we didn't do anything, would it have really passed? The compensation package? Yes, I believe so. But the Texas issue? I'm not sure. But because we all came together and got everyone to vote, it passed. The issue was not convincing people to vote a certain way. The issue was getting people to vote in the first place. And here's what I said on May 19th, privately on my Patreon page. What happens if uh, Elon doesn't get his compensation package? By the way, I personally think that he will get his compensation package approved. I think the chances of that are very, very, very high. So I was totally right about this. But I think it would have been so foolish for me to say this publicly because that would have discouraged people from voting, which would have then made it less likely that we actually get everything passed, especially the Texas thing. And so now the new Tesla chapter begins where Tesla is going to become the most valuable company on earth. That's the deal that Elon Musk just made with Omar and all of us. So what's next for Tesla now? I think Prasad has a point. Tesla investors now need to mobilize to give Elon Musk a new incentive plan that achieves 100 million Teslas on the road, 100 million humanoid robots, a dominant robot taxi network, a dominant solar energy and storage business and then of course a much higher market cap as well which i think can be largely accomplished with giving elon more voting control of tesla elon didn't ask for more money i'm excited to see that common sense has won today and i want to extend a sincere get lost to everyone who voted no do not just sell your shares sell your shares at 2018 prices if you voted no by the way we cannot be friends and if you voted yes i love you all it's a bad day for activist delaware judges and tesla 
Tesla investors trying to make profits on the collapse of the stock price with options trades on a no vote. You are not judges and you are not investors. You are parasites. Do not bet against Tesla investors coming together. Your efforts failed against an army of Tesla retail investors who have now forgotten how much Elon has contributed to Tesla's success. We will all continue to support Elon with our votes enabling him to gain and retain the 25% voting control required to avoid another corporate hijacking episode like this one. We will not let activists and parasites derail this great company. Jason says I can lose 2 million in one day in paper losses holding Tesla and sleep well but honestly this vote definitely messed with my sleep it didn't mess with mine because i was confident that the vote would actually pass as so many of us were coming together and there was so much effort put into getting people to vote warren bradley announced that he will be buying the stock that he sold in the next day or so he explains how he feels i don't know why people would think i'm upset i'm 80 percent invested in tesla stock and just got great news about the stock plus i'm having a wonderful time in kyoto with my girlfriend because we know that elon wants to have more control of tesla and everyone at tesla picked texas i'm pretty sure there is a way to have a dual class structure in texas which by the way is not possible post ipo in delaware so today everything is going perfectly for Tesla shareholders. Long time shareholders. And by the way, Ross Gerber deleted this post actually, but the internet never forgets. Indeed, it's deleted as you can see right here. Again, this won't age well, Ross. Did I vote no? Yes, Ross. For Zad had a... Uh, important message for Ross Gerber as you can see here I'm not going to read it but it's important can I court genuity yesterday before the vote had a new Tesla stock note we do not view Tesla without Musk as attractive as we are currently buy rated and believe Tesla is changing the world for the better we would be disappointed if shareholders reneged on a deal but the good news is they did it and billionaire Bill Ackman called out the judge basically taking away Elon Musk's compensation after he created enormous value for shareholders is theft he's not even a tesla shareholder by the way although he drives a model x and now here are some of the latest tesla stock news tesla on its website is saying that from july 1st due to expected tariffs on the model 3 vehicles in europe exported from china to europe the prices are likely to increase so tesla is acknowledging that tesla is likely to pay tariffs higher tariffs than what tesla is paying right now we don't know how big they are going to be though they have a been announced specifically for Tesla yet. Tesla is also making another pricing move. Tesla has increased the starting lease prices for Model Y trims in the US by up to 12.5%. It's unclear why Tesla is doing this. Yesterday's video about ARK Invest's new Tesla stock price target did horribly for me and I read some of the comments and the ones that I read almost all of them <laughs> were negative and dunking on Kathy Wood saying that this is not going to happen. No way. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And while Kathy's returns in the last 10 years have not been great, ARKK has only gone up 118% in the last roughly 10 years, while S&P 500 did 168% roughly in the same time frame. People forget that roughly 5 years before 2023, she also had a 5-year Tesla stock price target just like she has one today, and it ended up being extremely accurate actually. Kathy Wood's special is Tesla. So when it comes to Tesla specifically, I think it's worth paying attention to Kathy Wood. And check this out. Fred Lambert from Electric admits that Tesla would have died if it wasn't for Elon Musk. He's close to 100% sure that this is true and I definitely agree with him on that. Tesla is making another pretty big move here. Tesla has hired at least 18 engineers from a startup making direct drive actuators for robots. It is being liquidated by Cock Industries. And this is by the way completely unrelated, but um... Does Optimus is is he is the robot male? If if he is, would he have balls of steel? And if yes, would they be the ones making these balls of steel? I don't know, but it's unclear if it's a full acquisition or just Tesla taking advantage of the liquidation. Here is fantastic news for SpaceX. FAA confirmed that they are not requiring a mishap investigation for SpaceX's four Starship launch, which means that SpaceX can proceed with another Starship test flight much sooner as long as Starship is ready. So I'm looking forward to the next one, which is sort of a big deal because SpaceX uh, will be experiencing the first time that a mishap investigation will not be required post a test flight. So going forward, expect things to move 
quicker. Ark Invest's Brett Winton published more research about robot taxis. To fully grok Tesla's robot taxi transition, it's useful to think about it at the individual vehicle level. And he's using some inputs from Ark Invest's 2029 model. At a high level, Tesla goes from making a capital intensive one time marginally profitable EV sale to generating software margin type revenue per mile off that vehicle for as long as it remains in fleet. The economics at the latter overwhelm the former of course and this is going to be a huge opportunity for tesla and if you haven't tried fsd yet what are you doing are you really a tesla stock investor lately i've been spending quite a bit of time driving on fsd and the more i drive the more evident to me it becomes that tesla got this it will take some time still but the problem is going to be solved at this point it's beyond obvious if you use fsd regularly and if you used it when it was really bad. I mean, I remember when Tesla wouldn't even recognize traffic lights and stop signs, and now I haven't had a single experience where it didn't recognize a stop sign. And it's only getting better going forward. In rough numbers, Tesla currently sells cars for $40,000 that cost $32,000 to build and from which they pull $4,000 in income before taxes. It's a tough business. Highly volatile and demand against an expensive factory footprint on thin margins. And you only make money once when you sell the vehicle you don't make money again basically unless later someone upgrades to fsd but that's fsd so what happens when that vehicle becomes a robot taxi people pay per mile to ride and tesla collects a platform fee that same car could go 100,000 miles at one dollar per mile against which tesla collect 80 cents 100,000 in gross revenue eighty thousand dollars in net revenue per year every year now i think 100,000 miles it's a bit high and Maybe that's more of a bull case that they have. I have my numbers on my model and I don't go with 100,000 miles per vehicle and certainly I don't go with $1 per mile. Over time, the numbers will go lower. But in the beginning, sure, we can achieve $1 per mile, no problem. And if you really push it, maybe in the beginning, we can even achieve 100,000 miles per year. But I think only in the beginning, later on, there are going to be a lot more robot taxis and naturally utilization rates are going to drop because Tesla will sort of start to compete against itself and there will be some lidar players and maybe they will figure out how to get their costs down but you will not be able to be tesla on costs in the long term definitely not with lidar and hd maps at a top line basis the one-time sale for forty thousand dollars could become eighty thousand dollars in ongoing sales annually oh and brett specifies that these numbers are crudely right for the first million robo taxis okay so obviously they understand that the numbers over time are going to go down down, including the profits per mile. But how does this translate into profitability even at 40 cents per mile in software and network operating expense on top of maintaining and charging the vehicle, which the owner will bear covered by his 20 cents per mile? Tesla would clear 40,000 per year in operating profits. So sell a vehicle, you make $4,000 in one time operating profit, but that same vehicle as a robot taxi results in $40,000 in annually recurring operating profit. So let's walk through Robotaxi economics line by line. Constructive feedback is appreciated. How many miles could a Robotaxi go? New York City cabs typically do 70,000 miles per year constrained by New York congestion. At 20 miles per hour operating 14 revenue hours per day, a Robotaxi could do 100,000 miles. Keep in mind that's New York City. That's the most populated city in all of the USA. So naturally, you might have higher utilization rate over there because anywhere where you drop a passenger, you will probably have another passenger to pick up. But you go from downtown where you pick up the passenger and you drop off someone in some remote suburb where almost no one lives, you're not going to have uh, someone else who you can probably pick up right there and go back downtown or go to another location. You'll probably need to drive a little bit to find your next passenger. So generally speaking, for anything outside of New York City, I would lower the numbers a little bit more. The central tendency in our forecast is 95,000 miles per year, 260 miles per day. These are revenue miles, and we implicitly assume, but don't specify, that non-revenue miles are relatively small. This is safe, I think, given the assumed density of robotaxis and riders. On a utilization basis, non-revenue miles could probably go to 25% of total without getting out of reasonable, but that would raise costs for the underlying vehicle operator now and this is important how much p 
people are willing to pay per mile. Apparently Uber riders pay on the order of $3 per mile. And Tasha's work on demand elasticity in the transportation space shows that the market should expand to a trillion developed market miles addressable at $1 per mile. Truly, this translates into the 10 millionth 100,000 mile robotaxi being able to price at $1 per mile, but the picture is probably complicated by Tesla having to selectively infill areas where they have regulatory approval. $1 per mile seems a pretty safe assumption. I don't think Tesla is going to stop there though. Tesla is going to build more robot taxis, get more of them out in the streets, and then we will be competing against vehicle ownership. So I think a dollar per mile, that's just going to be temporary. But what can Tesla charge in platform fees? 79 cents is a central point in our model. Why so high? Even at 21 cents per mile, the return on invested capital for owner operating on the Tesla robot taxi network should prove compelling and Tesla will simply command the rest. We have a unit economics model that demonstrates this, but you can easily rough into it. Buy a car for 40,000, electricity is 5 cents per mile, maintenance 3 cents per mile, turns cleaning 2 cents per mile. So 11 cents per mile yields a 4 year payback period and the vehicle lasts more than 5. The treatment of platform fees was one of the major changes that we made to the model. Previously we had asserted that Tesla could command 50% platform fees but without a lot of evidentiary support just knowing that they should have more economic power than uber the reason this new treatment makes sense is that the economics of the business should not look radically different if tesla were to own and operate the business as compared to a third party at a one dollar per mile and a 50 percent platform fee the owner of the vehicle would be out forty thousand dollars for a model three and then collecting fifty dollars in revenue against ten thousand dollars in marginal costs annually I'm massively outsized return on capital for Model 3 owners. It's unclear why Tesla would give away such lucrative economics, at least as the model expands and equilibrates. Instead, Tesla are likely to own and operate the initial fleet and then open up to third-party owners who will get reasonable but not excessive returns. I think that makes sense. What is the margin structure on the $80,000 per year in net revenue to Tesla? Here, we clearly have more work to do. At the central point in our model, we assume that Tesla collects $40,000 in operating profits and spends $40,000 on operating expenses per vehicle per year. Some of that operating expense has to go to customer service, remote operation, some on insurance, though crashes should be extraordinarily remote, events, and almost always the other guy's fault, some on municipal taxes and fees. All of the other cost of goods sold fall on the owner operators. The only clear comp here is Uber, but their business has much more complex cost structures. They have to recruit and retain drivers, establish relationships with restaurants and delivery customers, onboard menus, resolve driver and rider disputes. Zooming out from the single vehicle level, our model implies that Tesla is spending on the order of 380 billion annually on robotaxi operating expenses, over and above most of the cogs, and there's plenty of reason to believe that margins could be better. So in Arc's view, 50% seems conservative. Now to we get a 100,000 mile a year vehicle generating $100,000 in gross revenue, $80,000 in net revenue, and $40,000 in operating profit per annum. If the vehicle lifetime is five years, Tesla goes from making $4 billion in EBITDA on a vehicle sale pre robotaxi to $200,000. Where are we wrong? Asks Brett Winton. Well, we can cut the numbers in half, all of them, and the numbers will still be incredibly impressive. You cut the price target by half and you still have $1,300 per share. And keep in mind, ARK Invest's Tesla stock price target includes no Optimus bot. So expect another big Tesla stock price increase from ARK Invest when they finally add the Tesla Optimus bot into their valuation model. No Patreon video today because I want to get this video out before the shareholder uh, vote or meeting officially begins. And I will see you all back tomorrow. Really good news today. We'll be voting and I'm extremely happy with how everything is going. And I'm looking forward to next videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. By joining Patreon, you will have access to all of my exclusive videos on Patreon as well as how much I am willing to pay for each Tesla share between 2024 and 2033. If you join the investor tier, you will also have access to my valuation model where you will see all of my assumptions, including deliveries, 
the energy business, Tesla's future businesses like FSD, and of course, much more. And then if you want to easily download that and put in your own numbers, then this third tier is for you. To all of my Patreon supporters, thank you so much. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet as well. It's really important to like the videos because that makes it less likely that the channel will be shadow banned later like my other big uh, channel got shadow banned before from about 50% of my regular viewers. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.